Let's now expand on our price elasticity of demand and show us why it's important. So we talked a little bit about business owners wanting to have an idea about it because um, they may, they, they would like to know what's going to happen if they change their prices around. And ha let's now show how elasticity can actually show that. So if we take a demand curve here, right, and we look at the elasticities, right, so this is pizza, and uh, so we see elasticity equals one, and we see up here the elasticity equals four, down here it equals one fourth, all right. And you know, in this example here, it shows that the upper parts are more elastic, lower parts are more inelastic. So let's look at another example here. So here we have the price elasticity of demand, where the demand is equal to price equals minus 2q plus 12. Now, if you were to go through and find the price elasticity of demand on here, you would find these points here. So when the price is 10, you plug that in there, quantity demand, you find the quantity demanded is 1. When the price is 8, quantity demand is 2, and so on and so forth. Okay. So what you can see is that the price elasticity of demand is going down. So the, might, the question might be, well, why is that? Okay, it's a linear demand, and you're, have, you're seeing the exact same changes as you go through. Right. Well, let's think about that. All right, so let's look at, let's first look as we go from um, price from zero to two. So when the price goes from zero to two, quantity demanded goes from six to to five. Right. So what's happening, the price is going from zero to two. And even if you just consider it to be, you know, 0 0.00001 to two, right, you're seeing a percentage wise, very large increase in the price. Whereas quantity demand is going from six to five, which is percentage wise less. So let's look at another example here. Let's say that the when the um, price goes from two to four, quantity goes from five to four. Now, over this point, you can see that from two to four, the price is doubling. Okay? Price is doubling, it's going up 100%. Whereas quantity demanded is going from five to four. And so it's going down by 20%. Now, keep in mind that these price elasticity of demands are um, at these specific points, not necessarily at the interval. But over this interval, if we were to look at it from price from two to four, percentage change in quantity, all right, again, it's going to be um, five minus four, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be 20%. All right, so quantity went down by 20%, price went up by 100%. All right, so over this range, that's where you can see, you know, the elasticity is going up. All right, but where it's more inelastic, a relatively small change in quantity, but you have price doubling. When you get up here, on the other hand, here, for example, going from um, 8 to 10, all right, price going from 8 to 10, all right, so price went up from 8 to 10, so it went up by 25%. But quantity went from two to one, so it went it got cut in half, so it went down by fifty percent. So the basic idea is that as you get in these larger prices, all right, the quantities get smaller, the impact on quantity percentage-wise becomes larger and larger. So this is one part of it. All right, so here's our price elasticity of demand at different points along the demand curve. Now let's also look at total revenue for a second. So we have total revenue, which is the number of units you sell, quantity, times the price you sell each unit. Okay? And so these come from just our demand curve. All right. And so again, when the price is zero, the quantity is six. Total revenue, which is price times quantity, zero times six, zero. When the price is two, 
quantity is five. And so if you sell five units at $2 a piece, two times five is 10, four times four is 16, six times three is 18, eight times two is 16, and then 10, and then zero. So this shows the total revenue for different units, sorry, this is quantity, for different units that gets produced. All right. And you can see the peak here is when the quantity is three and the revenue is 18. So now if we combine these two, you should, these are a little bit off, but um, they're meant to be lined up with each other. But when you compare these two graphs, Here's what we see. So the first thing that I wanna note is this. All right, so let's look at the demand first, demand curve. This demand curve is going to have the price elasticity of demand equal to one at the midpoint. All right, so what is the midpoint? The midpoint is exactly the middle point on that demand. All right. So for example, if you're looking at this in graph form, the price goes from zero up to 12. What is the midpoint there? Zero to 12, six, okay. Quantity goes from zero to six. What is the midpoint between zero and six? It's three. And so the midpoint, all right, midpoint price is six, midpoint quantity is three. So this is where our price elasticity of demand equals one. Now, the other thing you can see we talked about is that price elasticity of demand is going up as you move up, up the demand curve. All right. So if it's price elasticity of demand equals one at the midpoint, right, and the elasticity is getting larger as you move up, that means that anywhere above the midpoint is elastic, anywhere below the midpoint is inelastic. And if we go back, that was discussed, here we go. So midpoint, all right, halfway between zero and 25, 12.5, halfway between zero and 50, 25. At this point, the price elasticity of demand is equal to one. Anywhere above this point is greater than one. So it's elastic in here. And down here, it's inelastic. So coming back here, if we, um, break this down, there's a couple things you can see. First, where's the revenue's highest point when the quantity is three? Now, as we I just noted, the quantity is three, that's the midpoint quantity. And so revenue is maximized at the midpoint of your demand curve, right? Right there. Now, the other thing you see is, so here's your midpoint quantity three. The other thing you see is that as you approach that midpoint from either direction, the revenue is going up. So your revenue becomes greater as you get to that midpoint from either direction. So let's, let's look at the implications from that. So let's say that you know you have elastic demand. Your price elasticity equals one. All right, you're somewhere up in here. That means that as you increase your price, all right, so if you're elastic and you increase your price, you're moving away from the midpoint, and so your total revenue is going down. And if you decrease your price, you're getting closer, your revenue is going to go up. Right. So let's think about that kind of intuitively for a second. So you have elastic demand. That means that people are very responsive to a change in the price. So if you raise your price, you may, you're going to receive more money per unit sold, but what's going to happen is that the, the number of units you sell is going to go down, relatively speaking, um, by a large portion because you have elastic demand. So the, the units you still sell, you're going to make more money off of, but you're losing all that other demand, okay, the quantity demand. Right? You're losing all those other sales. So increasing the price when you have elastic demand chases away so many people that it causes your overall revenue to go down. But because you have elastic demand, if you wanna maximize your revenue, right, and you lower your price, yes, you're gonna be making less money per unit because you have the lower price, but because you have elastic demand, people are very responsive to price changes, you're gonna pull in a lot more demand. And so overall, your revenue is gonna go up. Now, if we look when you have, your elasticity is less than one, 
you have inelastic demand. So if you have inelastic demand and you increase the price, you're moving towards the midpoint, what's going to happen? Your total revenue is going to go up. If you decrease the price, you're going to move away from the midpoint. And so your total revenue is going to go down. And so if you think about that, let's think of an example, right? Or intuitively. So again, you have any less demand, people are not very responsive to changes in the price. So what happens? You increase the price, you're going to be collecting more from each unit you sell. And because people aren't very responsive to um, price changes, you have any elastic demand, you're not going to lose that many customers. Whereas if you decrease the price, you're going to be making less per unit while not pulling in many more um, clients, many more customers. And so you're making less per unit while not pulling in many more, while not selling many more units. And so your revenue is going to go down. Uh, a great example of this is with the EpiPens. And so the EpiPens, you heard the news at some point, where the price of them was jacked way up. Right? Well, from an ethical perspective, it's one that's another conversation. But from a business perspective, it's not a bad move. Now, there's PR implications on a large scale, but for this specific product, right, people need EpiPens. All right. They need it for allergies. And so what happens then is if, um, you know, the price goes up, what are they going to say? Eh, all right, the price went up. I'm not going to, I don't need it anymore. All right, so I'll just, I'll figure something else out. No, they can't because they need it. And so because of that, when the price goes up, they just, for the most part, people just had to pay that higher price. And so because any, the demand was very inelastic, total revenue went up. Okay. So if we look at an example here, let's say the demand is price equals minus 1AQ plus 4. And so if you graph it, it's going to look like this. All right. It's going to cross at price is 4, quantity at um, 32. And so the midpoint price, halfway between 0 and 4, is two and quantity between zero and 32 is 16. And so this is the revenue maximizing price. This is the revenue maximizing quantity. And so at that point, you're selling 16 units at $2 a unit. And so your revenue, the maximum revenue you can achieve is $32. That is the most that you can possibly make revenue wise. And if your price goes up or down, your total revenue is going to go down because of that. Because again, that $32 is the max amount of revenue that you can make.